New life is always possible. Greetings. I'm Kevin De Beer, serving as interim moderator currently at Moncrief Parish Church, and it is my privilege to make this continued attempt in limited ways to somehow offer a message, a word of hope, hopefully encouragement and inspiration as we gather as the church in new and creative ways. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to be what is in the privacy and the sacred space of your home. The church down throughout the ages has met in a variety of ways, but in the midst of the current crisis, this is the way that seems most appropriate. My honest prayer and hope is that as we gather and offer our prayers, as we gather our thoughts and center our hearts, that we would truly sense that we are part of a wider family, not only at Moncrief, as we seek to connect via this particular platform, but also as part of the wider church, the church in Scotland, the church of Scotland, and the church throughout the world. One way, is, one way in which we sense that rhythm is recognizing that we all find ourselves, that is Christians, in the season of Lent. The season of Lent is customarily understood as a time of introspection, a time of self-reflection, a time of gathering our hearts in light of the invitation of God's Spirit to ex be examined by the searing heat of God's holy love. And uh, so on this particular fifth Sunday of Lent, there are different passages of Scripture, the 130th Psalm, the story of the raising of Lazarus from the dead, and the two passages that we will focus on at Moncrief. A passage from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 37, and then words from Paul as he writes to the church in Rome, Romans chapter 8 from verse 6. Firstly, I read the prophet Ezekiel 37, the first 14 verses in the New International Version. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me to and fro among them, and I saw a great many bones of the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, O sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come from the four winds, O breath. Breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. O oh, my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. And I will settle you in your own land. And you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken. And I have done it. Declares the Lord. A remarkable reminder that God invites life in and through the words and speech of the prophet. There is a real indication that speech brings forth new possibilities. We recognize in these trying times that all of us are invited in the midst of the challenges that we face, the anxieties that are real, the concerns that weigh heavily upon our hearts to speak forth that which leads in the direction of life. Here, as the prophet speaks, there is an indication of life being offered. There is an indication of life becoming a reality. This is, in many ways, a recreation of the narrative, the story, the drama 
of that initial moment of creation. God says, and it is so. God now invites the prophet as his agent, as the one who bears forth his word in the world to speak hope, to speak life, to speak spirit, to speak breath. There is a very real sense in which we affirm the possibility that only God can bring life. That many ways we are overwhelmed by a sense of our own inadequacy. In times like this, we are overwhelmed by our own brokenness. What can we do? What should we do? We, we run around, we feel caged, we feel troubled, tried, tested. We wonder, what is it that we can do? In many ways, the season reminds us that there is a very little we can do. In fact, the invitation and the indication of governments around the world is that the less we do, the better. The more life-affirming, life-encouraging, life-creating, life-renewing it becomes for others. The more we stay at home, the more we exercise a discipline of recognizing and living with our own thoughts and those nearest and dearest to us the less we place pressure upon wider society. It's counterintuitive. It's against everything we've been taught. It's about everything that we long for, we strive for, we want. To simply wait, to allow God's Spirit to speak into us the invitation of life, and then to give expression to that life by choosing words carefully, wisely, well, by speaking forth the potential of God into the world, into our own lives, our families, those nearest and dearest to us, by offering prayer and reflection. It's difficult. It's not easy. These coming weeks and months, dare we say it, are not going to be easy nor comfortable. They're going to stretch us. They're going to stretch our imagination. They're going to demand from us a fresh realization and recognition indeed of our sense of powerlessness but hopefully they will also offer us opportunity and space to sit with our vulnerability and our mortality to sit with our lives in their brokenness their anxiety and their questions and to be open to the spirit and to recognize the spirit's invitation that truly we might live that type of life that is open to the spirit and so our second reading is from that remarkable letter, as Paul writes to the church in Rome. Again, I'm in the New International Version, Romans chapter 8, from verse 6. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God, does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit, if the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin. Yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who lives in you. It's extreme language. It's Paul at his best. Paul at his penetrating best. It is Paul reminding us of the difference between life given over to selfishness, the sinful nature, and life in the spirit which opens itself to others and opens itself most importantly and creatively to God. He gives us two options. How are we going to live? In light of the prophet's urging, in light of the dramatic raising of Lazarus from the dead in our gospel reading, John chapter 11, which I haven't read particularly, but did read parts of it in my invitation to worship in the gift of being Bells Hill Central together. There is a reminder that God calls forth life from the tomb, from the dark spaces, from the edges, from our vulnerability. From our sense of being exposed, our sense of being weak, our sense of being isolated. From that place, God invites us to live a life in the Spirit. The first thing that we can do throughout the season of Lent is acknowledge that we're pretty bad at waiting. We struggle and are frustrated by it. We want to go out and do and change and shape the world. But in light of the current crisis, we're invited to live a very different way. It's going to demand much from us, but the Spirit is there to aid us in it. This season too will pass. 
But we will do ourselves a disservice if we do not allow our lives to be shaped in fresh and creative ways by life-giving, life-affirming spirit. Newness of life is always possible, is the constant refrain of the gospel. In the midst of the oppression of the Romans, the boot of the empire, the sense in which we are oppressed by economic, political and social concerns, the sense in which we quite literally can be crushed by all the voices that speak externally and internally that remind us of our frailty. We're also invited to hear another voice. It's the voice of Jesus outside the tomb that says, come forth. It's the voice of the prophet that believes the dry bones can live, can live sorry, and speaks forth possibility into them. It's the voice of the spirit that invites us to recognize that we belong to Christ. We are constantly being renewed by God's life-giving agency. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, you know us better than we know ourselves. As we gather and as we gather in different ways, we pray for each other. In this week and particularly at this time, we are particularly mindful of those who are vulnerable and on the edges. We think particularly of Joy as she mourns the loss of Bob's life and love and her immediate and extended family as we gather to honor that life this past week. We pray for all those who find themselves grieving, struggling, wounded and despairing. We pray at this time they might sense the whisper of your spirit and be invited into new possibilities of life explored and life shared. We pray particularly for those who care for us in this time of vulnerability and isolation. Yet yeah, truly you might strengthen them. We pray for those struggling with the coronavirus, those who find themselves debilitated by the shocking illness, that you would keep them in the palm of your hand, offer them a reassurance of your peace, strengthen them by your love, and the need in time to come, even give them an experience of your joy. For these things we ask in Jesus' strong name, with thanksgiving. Amen.